Welcome back to this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi. All of our shows can be heard on iTunes, Stitcher.com, Spreaker.com, several hundred former guest websites whose CEOs have been on our show and their companies have put their interview on their website, as well as various business-oriented podcasting services. If you'd like to uh, subscribe, just type in Critical Mass Radio Show, all four words on your favorite podcasting software, and you'll get our weekly downloads of our radio show. We get about several thousand downloads each month of the various podcasts that we do. All of our shows can be heard live on octalkradio.net. Okay, as promised before the commercial break, so we're going to have Dr. Jack Singer here in the studio, and he's sitting right across the... And so if you're listening to us live on OC, or you're watching or listening to us on iTunes, maybe you want to look at our YouTube channel, Richard Franzi, and you get to see this interview in person with Dr. Jack Singer. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you at the studio. It's my pleasure, it's good to have you here in the Critical Mass Radio Show. And let's start by, I know that you work with a lot of different professionals, and you focused on financial advisors. Can you, as well, can you describe what your role or what role you play in helping them? Well, you know, in 2008, when we had the economic crisis here, financial advisors as a profession became terribly stressed. Many of them wanted to go out of business. Many of them couldn't handle the overwhelming stress coming from clients who were panicking, things of that nature. And at that time, somebody who was running the Australian Financial Advisors Association contacted me after reading some of my articles on stress mastery Uh and asked if I could help advisors with stress and that sort of opened a door I never thought about before we did a video series and it led to me actually writing my book and and leading me to an epiphany that I can do the same thing with financial advisors that I do with Olympic athletes and teach them how to develop a champion's mindset we're talking with dr. Jack Singer and so that you just gave us a teachable moment in the first answer which is because business owners running middle market firms are listening so the content that you created in general about stress was seen by an industry association gentleman and it got you into a whole new field of practice absolutely it was so a, creating good content and making it available I assume it was available on the internet somehow somewhere it was available just in terms of my stress mastery articles that I publish all over the place okay somebody saw it said we can take that put it into our field and it was a game changer for my career right it, it's led you to the reason why I, wanted you to come in is to talk specifically about the financial advisors ultimate stress mastery guide so why did you decide to write a book well you know I had written another book for teachers the teachers ultimate stress mastery guide and you know I was thinking of writing a whole series of stress mastery guides because the guts of these books are identical for any profession it's just that each book is specific for that group where I use case examples and things like that and I decided that if I'm going to start specializing with financial professionals that it'd be nice to have a book that they could really use as a handy reference so that's why I wrote the book so so did you had the teachers the ultimate stress master guide for teachers right out before that right and so that intellectual property and that knowledge that you had you've been a- you were able to modify and bring it into this book exactly so okay so ladies and gentlemen teachable moment number two repurposing your content right 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 it was easy to do all I had to do is get new case examples instead of using teachers each of my chapters starts with a case an right. actual case right and I start in the beginning of what the stress was, what the problem was for this person, and at the end, how they resolved it using the techniques I discuss in that chapter. Uh So it meant using the same core, but finding examples with financial advisors. So I started an inter... I started interviewing financial advisors all over the country, many of whom I'd already been speaking to in my professional speaking, and got a whole cadre of these people who said, oh, yeah, I've been under stress, and here's what I did. Mm-hmm. Well, how did you resolve it? Here's what I, why are you still in the business? So I took those cases to use as examples for people and how they could overcome the stress. Right, and because since, uh, to your earlier point, I'm talking with Dr. Jack Singer, he he's an author of many books. He's also a speaker, and he works, as he said, with professional athletes and other performers etc um, when you when you take the basic concepts that work in one profession and they and you apply them to the to another profession t- give us another teachable moment if possible because I believe in the power of being in a niche and this is basically a niche it right is. you've discovered uncovered been it's, pulled into a very it's, it's, lucrative niche it's a niche 
you know, first, sports psychology is a niche. There aren't that right. many sports psychologists. So I was working with Olympic athletes, world champion athletes, uh, elite youngsters, everybody who's really got that top-level performance, but they need an edge. And okay. so they came to me to learn the edge. And one day I had an epiphany. I'm, I'm saying to myself, I'm teaching all of these wonderful athletes how to be better than their competition the same techniques would work for executives, for CEOs, and now for financial advisors right. and so you, salespeople. You keep yeah. moving and opening up markets. Right. And uh, I don't doubt there are a, probably more than I would expect athletes and high-performing high individuals that could be your clients. But when I think of financial advisors, I mean, it's such a larger arena. It's a large arena. It includes insurance producers or agents. It right. includes financial planners. You know, there are a lot of different terms that encompass these people. Uh, I just spoke for a conference that has benefits providers, people who sell benefits to companies, like when your workers are injured, we sell that insurance. Uh -huh. They're financial advisors. So I'm trying to cast a wide net over all of these people because what I teach them is all the same thing. And what I teach them, essentially, if you want to look at what I call my value proposition, Rick, yes. is... You know, you can learn everything about the products you sell. You can learn all about how to do financial planning and financial assistance to people. But if you don't understand the psychological obstacles that can get in your way, you'll never perform up to your ability. Okay. And that's where I fit in. Right. All of the training that most salespeople get in any profession leaves that out. They just assume if we teach you the methods, you can do it. Right. They forget some people are overwhelmed with self-doubt, with lack of self-confidence, with stress. And I teach people how to overcome those obstacles. So. Let's take a step back, and I'm talking with Dr. Jack Singer. How did you even get into this field to begin with? Not just coaching and consulting athletes and financial advisors and ex the, the whole area of psychology. Well, it's interesting. When I was um, in uh, high school, my parents didn't have enough money to pay for me to go to college, so I decided I better get to work in the summertime. And in the, work, in the summertime, I worked in factories, and I saw the conditions that the working people had to undergo and I thank my lucky stars I didn't have to do that as a profession but I used to ask myself is there anyone helping these people or watching out for these people so I did a little research and found there's a field of industrial psychology okay so when I went to college I majored in psychology and I knew I was going to go to graduate school and major in industrial psychology so I attained a PhD in industrial psychology it's actually called industrial organizational psychology mm -hmm. and later I got a postdoctorate in clinical in sports psychology because I had interest in that area as well. So the bulk of my career, I've been really consulting with business and industry and working on the stress and selection techniques and things like that with people who work in companies. That was my original background. Interesting. So, you know, stress uh, may be good news from a business perspective, not so good news from a people perspective. It sounds like stress is apparent in many if not every profession it permeates everything but the interesting thing that I'll tell your listeners at some point is that stress is what you make yourself events in your life do not cause stress it's interesting let's say I ran into traffic and couldn't make it here on time that's an event but that doesn't cause stress the only thing that causes stress is how I interpret that event okay. and what I say to myself okay if I say to myself Rick is going to be really upset because I missed the last live show for this reason and I had to do it remotely and he's gonna think I'm a flake then that would cause stress for me sure it would but if I say to myself you know I can only do what I do and I will still be able to provide a quality program for him, even if I do it from my cell phone, then I don't, it doesn't cause stress, yet the event is the same. Right. So we cause our own stress by interpreting in a stressful way events that take place in our life. And you're right, we're going to talk about self-talk in the second segment, but it sounds like, and from, I've heard you speak, and f spirit of full disclosure, Dr. Jack has been very gracious with his time. It's he has spoke to all of my CEO peer groups here in Orange County to great reviews. Um, he connects very well with middle market CEOs and business executives. Uh, it, as you trigger off of that event, it sounds like and you that the more you do that, the more you get yourself into a routine, a pattern, a rut of that. Yes. Yeah, because you, people develop unfortunate thinking habits. Their their habits they're sometimes based on silly beliefs, like I have to be perfect or I'm a failure right. would be a silly belief, you know. And if they don't have somebody examine those habits, they just keep doing it and then wonder why things don't get better. 
things will never get better if you keep thinking the same way. So when you say examine those, are you talking about a trained professional then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can talk to someone on the phone that I've never even met, and in 10 minutes understand what his or her thinking patterns are and how they're causing, they're running amok because of those patterns. So right away we start changing them. Right. Okay, right away. And that's one of the things in your most recent talk that I heard you say, which was very... I've, don't know the right word, liberating so for many of my members that in this area, um, the solutions can come quickly. Solutions can come quickly in all the areas of psychology when we intervene if people practice. That's all it takes is practice instead of just listening and saying, okay, I'll do it later. Right. You need to practice and you need to have faith in it and it really works. We can fix most problems that are psychological very quickly. Is that an evol- uh, we're kind of off the subject of your book, and we're going to get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. I know if you're listening because you want to learn about the content is, that's in Dr. Jack's The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide. Believe me, we're going to spend time on that as well. But um, is that that ability to solve and resolve issues quickly, is that the evolution of psychology or yes. a different application you, of it? You are so sharp that you, you know, this isn't even your field, and you figured out with a laser how to go right to what that was. I, I'm so impressed with you, Rick. Yes, it's an evolutionary process that was discovered about 20 years ago. Before that, psychotherapy took years. Right. People laid down on a couch, and the right. therapist said nothing, and they, you know, they, uh, and now somebody discovered years ago that if we understand what your thoughts are, we can quickly change those thoughts, and therefore your emotions will change dramatically. My goodness. Yeah. I hope you're listening to the show, and if you're not, you're missing out, and if you are, you need to tell people to listen to Critical Mass Radio Show with Dr. Jack Singer on this podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. It's on our YouTube channel, Richard Franzi. We're going to take our third and final commercial break, and when we come back, I've got questions on several of the different chapters and i'd really like to get into the substantive conversation about your book the financial advisors ultimate stress mastery guide after these words from our sponsors let's face it not all company challenges are the same which is why strategic market intelligence can help identify the actionable information you need to be more competitive Gain a better understanding of your brand, competition, best prospects, or new product opportunities to generate greater revenues in 2015. Call 949-357-9547 or visit www.strategicmarketintelligence.com. Are you ready to tap into the power of social media to promote your business? It's easy to get social with Turn Up the Volume, the award-winning social media marketing professionals who know how to get results. Drive web traffic, boost sales, get social today. Visit www.turnupthevolume.com. That's turnupthevolume.com. Many of you know that I have been a member of Center Club in Costa Mesa, California for a number of years. I use it for all of my CEO peer group meetings. I use it for my business meetings. I find the club's personnel to be professional and the club to be the perfect location to conduct business here in Orange County. People know of it, and if they haven't been to the club, they are so impressed with the professional renovations that were made a few years ago. It was a great club before that, but it is very modern in feel now. It has a very contemporary and relaxed side, which can be very good for casual business, and a very formal and elegant side, which is perfect for those very important dinner meetings that you're hosting, as well as meeting rooms that can hold between 10 people to 150 to 200 people. I can't speak enough about the Center Club and my membership at the Center Club. I would encourage you to learn more. Check out Center Club Orange County. Go to www.clubcorp.com and you can find the Center Club and I would encourage you to talk to them about membership. It's a great value. All right, we're back to Critical Mass Radio Show with Dr. Jack Singer. Uh, I said we're going to talk about your book, so let's get started. In Chapter 1, you explain the mind-body connection. Can you highlight that and your research that supports the state of mind-body and how the mind can affect your physical health? Well, there's some famous people who have done a ton of research in this. I would mention Hans Selye, who's really the father of stress research 
who started this. Then there's an author named Robert Sapolsky who wrote a wonderful book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. <laughs> and it's really all about how animals react instinctively, but human beings do a lot of thinking, which causes our problems. Okay. And animals don't get ulcers because they just react and then they're fine. So, for example, if a zebra is grazing on the Serengeti Plain and it senses there's a lion stalking it, it goes into the fight-or-flight nervous system, does what it has to do, and then it goes back to grazing once it escapes. With humans, we linger with these negative thoughts that right. go on and continue the stress and one of the problems is that when the fight-or-flight nervous system gets engaged every time we're under stress yes it shuts off the immune system because all of the energy needs to be funneled into saving your life so every time we're upset at traffic or something that happens at home with our teenager or something at work for those moments we're shutting down the immune system so somebody who has many of these moments every day is really introducing disease into their life right well dr. Jack Singer is our guest it sounds like my the concept of mindfulness and living in the moment is more like what a zebra does than what that's correct our higher order thinking maybe works that's against correct. us correct if people can learn to live in the moment and let everything else flow away that's why mindfulness is so popular now because it's a wonderful zen type relaxing kind of situation and it's all we really have right that's right is this moment in time that's and right. i'm spending with dr jack singer here on critical mass radio show okay so in chapter two you share how recent life changes can affect an advisor's health can you highlight some of the stressors or positive po coping prescriptions in your book yeah it's not just advisors but anybody every time right. you make a change in life it's a, it's worth a certain number of stress points these two navy psychiatrists many years ago discovered this and they discovered that the more points you had the more prone you were to illnesses Okay. Wow. They studied it with medical students, they studied it with pilots, they studied it with all kinds of people. And so the most points is the death of a spouse. That would be a hundred points. Okay. And then death of other family members is a lot of points. Making a job change is a lot of more points. Having a child, getting married, getting divorced, all of these things are worth points. And if you have over 300 points accumulated in a 12-month period, you're at the highest risk for developing a physical illness because of that. Anything from a cold to cancer. And they discover that definitively, and that research has held up ever since. So the idea that stress leads to illness is not a contemporary thought. It is a researched Ab fact. Absolutely. No question about it. And the newest researcher is a fellow named Martin Seligman who writes about positive psychology. Yes. He points out a ton of research that shows that if you're negative in your thinking, or you're pessimistic, yes. it also affects the immune system and leads to all kinds of physical outcomes. So it really is comes back to how much self-control over your own self-talk can you exhibit yeah and guess what it doesn't matter if you're genetically predisposed to this like you could have a parent who was negative you can learn to change it so you're saying you can be pre you can be genetically predisposed yes, to a certain way of thinking sure think about a, pa uh, a person who has a parent who, or two parents who are type a personalities uh -huh. they may be type a personalities from the time they're little kids but you can learn to change your thinking to modify the behaviors so you don't have to have the physical impact so we control this. Absolutely. We're not victims. No, we're not. All right. We're talking with Dr. Jack Singer, and we're taking content out of his book, The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide. But I suspect, Dr. Singer, that many of these concepts are also in your other book for teachers. Yes, the same concept. Same because concept. Because it applies to everybody. It so, doesn't matter. So if, people. like I did, if there's a CEO of a business who wants to learn these, they can buy either of these books. That's right. And, and the stories are the stories, but the content is the content. Precisely. So, so there's no reason they, should, they shouldn't be going and buying them. We're going to get to that in a minute. How, okay. they, how do they do that, okay. sir? Okay. So um, chapter three deals with how learning deals with learning how to handle your internal critic. I said earlier we're going to talk about self-talk. Uh, can you explain negative self-talk? And, and we, we've been talking about how it contributes to this, but how insidious it is? It's really insidious because it's based on habitual thinking. Yes. Actually, someone else wrote a book once called Change Almost Anything in 21 Days. And that the purpose of that book was to show that if you give yourself positive affirmations to take the place of the negative self-talk, in approximately three weeks you can change anything from a smoking habit to anything else. It's amazing. And so self-talk... And does it stick? It sticks. If so you, it's not... You have to keep 
doing right. things. But yeah, it sticks. Right. So self-talk is the critical ingredient for all of this. We Our negative self-talk can fit into many categories. I'll give you a couple examples. Catastrophizing yeah. is taking a little piece of information and blowing it out of proportion. So a person gets a call from a doctor's office saying, the doctor wants to talk to you about your lab results. That person then says to him or herself, I must have cancer and I'm going to die. And then it leads to a whole host of stress-related stuff. Why else stuff. would they call me, right? right? Exactly. When the doctor was just calling to say good news, you know, there's no problem. Right. Okay? So this is, people catastrophize all the time. Another one is mind reading. We tend to assume somebody's thinking something negatively about us without ever even checking it out. Right. And then we get tense and we worry about it. Someone's boss calls them into the office. On the way into the office, they start getting panicky. What did I do? I can't imagine. He never calls me and, you know, that this kind of thing. This can't be good. Right. And, and it could be anything. Should statements, saying I should have done this, I shouldn't do that, we beat ourselves up with shoulds as if there's some magic formula for what's right or wrong other than the Ten Commandments and whatever our state laws are, national laws. But we, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Why? Why is that so awful? And people beat themselves up all the time. So these are just three examples. In my book, I give you ten right. examples of negative kinds of self-talk that lead to unfortunate outcomes, both emotionally and physically. Are the, are, I know some people might be predisposed towards negative thinking, but is, are, are, is this self-talk, self-talk learned? Because learned? I'm thinking... Children in the playground, I'm not sure no. they have that. No, it's learned very early. Okay. Uh, and here's a quick, do I have time for how that happens? Yes. Okay. Someone did research with kids between the ages of 6 and 12 and wanted to find out how often these kids um, would were told positive things by their parents as opposed to negative things by well-meaning but misinformed parents. So a negative thing would be, oh, Jack, don't try out for that play. I, you don't really have that kind of talent. Or Phyllis, homecoming queen, you're pretty, but I've seen some of the other candidates trying to save you, you yeah. see. And they fi he found out that in the six-year span between ages 6 and 12, the average youngster in this country is told 143,000 negative things to 6,000 positive. That's where the negative self-talk starts. We and uh, one of my mentors. So we went, internalize what we we're hearing. We internalize it. One of my mentors said, "Like our subconscious mind is supposed to be a beautiful garden filled with flowers, but after we've been pounded with so many don'ts and you can't and you don't not good enough, we fill it with weeds and then uh -huh. we proceed to water and fertilize the weeds the oh. rest of our life unless someone comes and intervenes." Outstanding. Dr. Jack Singer is our guest. We're talking about his book, The Financial Advisor's Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide. So. Your example, so overwhelmingly negative, but it sounded like many times they were well-intended. Yeah. We're not saying, hey, you're fat right. or, you know, you're right. stupid. It's just right. we're trying to save you, but we're doing it in a way that is not helpful. Exactly. Well-intended. For example, when I told my dad I was going to become a professional speaker, my dad, who was shy said, are you sure you're going to be comfortable? You know, he was really projecting his yes. own fear. Yes, And And I could have easily let that undermine my self-confidence. Right. Well, well, if my dad, who's God to me, is saying I shouldn't do this, you know, but I obviously I'm too smart for that because I study all of this. So I said, right. Dad, I understand why you're saying it. Don't worry. But that doesn't mean that if you weren't in this profession, you wouldn't have, pers you wouldn't have pursued a speaking career, but you might have always had this imposter theory. Exactly. Right? That's you exactly what it is, is the imposter fear. Like, I'm not as good as I think I am. Because my dad said. Exactly. Exactly. So, it is a long time to spend with yourself if your self-talk isn't helping you. It sure right? is. It's a long day. You get up every day and it starts again. And then you wonder why you don't feel good in the morning. The reason you don't feel good in the morning because you went to sleep with negative self-talk, trying to get a good night's sleep. Gee, I hope I didn't screw this up. What's going to happen tomorrow? That's how it goes. That's why people don't sleep well. Right. That's why they have insomnia. Because if you turn on the fight or flight nervous system, which is what happens every time you have negative self-talk, your brain thinks there could be an emergency. It doesn't want you to sleep. Right. That's why people have insomnia. Shoots a little adrenaline right. in your exactly. system, gets you ready to go, and right. now you're wide awake. Exactly. Dr. Jack Singer is our guest here on Critical Mass Radio Show. A uh, couple more questions about your book, The Ultimate Stress Mastery Guide uh, for Financial Advisors. I, I found Chapter 7 interesting in that you attempt to help financial advisors select and retain ideal clients. Can you share why this is important in helping them master their stress? Yes, because many people, whether they're financial advisors or otherwise, if they have clients with whom they have to interact, or in fact, if they have friends with whom they have to interact, who are toxic personalities, 
that is very stressful and sometimes unfortunately we're married to a toxic personality and that's a very difficult way to go through life or a parent could be a toxic personality or even a child right. so I've listed in my book ten kinds of toxic personalities everything from a severe type A who is such a perfectionist that expects you to be perfect and if you're not you're a failure right um, to uh, I called one the Eddie Haskell if you remember leave it to beaver Eddie uh -huh. Haskell was a guy who smiled at you while he was stabbing you in the back. Okay. There are people like that. Um, there are people who are high maintenance for advisors, for example. They call them every day, why did my stock go down two cents? You know, right. These are people that it's not really worth whatever money you make from them. It's not worth it because the stress out, outweighs any possible financial gain you'll have from them. So I recommend cut these people loose. And these, again, content that is more universal. This is a universal prescription as well for any business yes, owner, is. right? I, as you're describing those personalities, right. I think they, they could be anywhere, exactly. not just in the financial exactly. industry. If you have somebody who's a rotten egg in your business because they question everything, and you've beat your head against the wall, beating your head against the wall trying to help that person be okay, and they're not, maybe it's time to let them go before they poison the rest of the barrel. Right. And you use the term toxic, and I'm wondering, but one of the key takeaways that I'm taking away from today, Dr. Jack Singer, is not just that people are intentionally toxic, but they may be well-meaning, but still toxic. That's is that possible? Right. Sure it is, and they don't understand they're toxic. And part of my interventions, when I work, I, I do mentoring for advisors and mm -hmm. other professionals. Part of when they tell me they've got a problem case is I ask them or teach them how to counsel that person who may not even be aware that they're coming across that way right. because sometimes you can save people and say did you know that this is what you do and it's aggravating yeah. well if you could change that we'd be a happier camper here right we? and it's not just you're not showing up just this way with me as your right. financial advisor you're exactly. probably showing up that way in life exactly for your own kids and grandkids exactly yeah okay the final chapter helps financial advisors to learn to become a more resilient person yeah can you share how a a few of the proven personal prescriptions to building resiliency because you, you really talk about how that's important as a, right. to manage your stress. So Yeah, well I call it the, I didn't make this up, this has been in history of, of psychology, the ABCDE method. Uh, whenever you're in a situation where your emotions are taking over in a negative way, you need to analyze this in terms of A, B, C, D, and E. A, what was the activating event that took place? B, what were my beliefs about that event that before I stopped those beliefs? What were they? C, what emotions did that lead to? What were the consequent emotions? Okay. Then D is the important thing. How can I think of a different way to look at this? Okay, I can counteract this. And E is the resultant emotions after I've counteracted it. So in the chapter, I teach people how to do each of those steps. For example, in D, counteracting it is asking yourself, questions like, do I have any evidence to support this thing I'm afraid of? Has it ever really happened to me or am I just afraid of it? <laughs> yeah. Do I have any evidence that may be the opposite? Okay, And if you start thinking logically like that, the negative emotions that were there because of the illogical thoughts melt away. Yeah, you change your state. Right. And your focus. Right. This is, this is some powerful stuff, Dr. Jack Singer, and I see how your books can help anyone, really. Anybody, doesn't matter if you're a financial advisor, a teacher, a salesperson, a CEO, anybody, because the core of the 77 proven prescriptions to build your resilience works for everybody. The time has flown by. If someone wants to, I'm sure they're going to, they want to buy your books, how would you suggest they do that? Well, they can do it right through me if they like. And by the way, for your listeners, I will offer something really special. If they want to ask me any question, I'll give them 20 minutes of free consultation wow. on the phone. How's that? That's beautiful. So at this number, and it's the same number if they want to order the book, it's 800-497-9880. Okay. Give that again. 800-497-9880. Uh, Again, the time has flown by as it did the first time you were on the show. Thank you for coming in and being so gracious with your knowledge and your time. My pleasure. It, anytime. It was a pleasure, Dr. Jack Singer. Okay, I've got to go. We're up against the clock. I, I'd just like to say I want to thank our advertisers, Center Club, Community Bank, Decision Toolbox, Executives Unlimited, MBN Design, SNH Rubber, Strategic Market Intelligence, SunUp Group, T and Company, Tone Software, Turn Up the Volume, and UPS Protection. Our producer for today's show was Paul Roberts. Our, I mean, our producer was Crystal Nunley. Our engineer was Paul Roberts. Our live events manager is Asia Celestino, and I'm your host, Rick Franzi. Until the next time we have a chance to be together, here's hoping that all of your decisions will move your company in a positive direction.